Hello, everybody, and welcome to what was originally called the Untitled MMA Show Podcast thing. And uh, by the way, this is the first episode, so no one even knows that. That was in a, a test footage video recording anyways now it's called the untitled fight cast so we kind of have a name now <laughs> but anyways um i'm not 100 percent sure what this show is going to be about consistently aside from you know just mma in general but today for the first episode i actually have something pretty serious in my opinion to talk about so last weekend at ufc 245 usman versus covington there was a lot of awesome stuff that, that went on. You know, three title fights on the line, one of which was an upset. Uh, the other one, just Amanda Nunez doing her thing for five rounds. It was awesome. It was awesome. Tonight, I prove it, guys. I'm ready for five rounds. Let's go. Let's do this again. It was an awesome night uh, of fights. Even if you weren't just there for the title fight, after watching everything that came before it, you were hyped for this title fight. You know, the storyline behind it, uh, both guys didn't like each other at all. And to be totally honest and preface the rest of this, uh, you know, sort of analysis type of video, because I want to be objective and I want to get this out of the way, I totally wanted Colby to lose, 100%. He's all on the Make America Great Again, Got bring, brings around Trump Jr.'s book and stuff. It's... It's ridiculous. I want people to hate me. That's a business model. No one cares about you. You're boring, man. People would rather, rather watch Flies Puck than watch you fight. But that being said, you know, Kobe has made this amazing character that literally saved him from being cut from the roster. But that, that's a whole nother story for another day. These guys don't like each other, and I didn't like Kobe. But this video is actually about Kamar Usman and the fact that he lied. And I have definitive proof that Kamar Usman lied in his fight against Colby Covington. So let's start off with the, the first iffy part of this fight. And we're going to start with the low blow. Now, there's a couple different indicators here of this probably not being a low blow. First off, without even actually watching what happened, let's look at how he walked away. Let's look at the look on his face, his posture. There are basically no signs of pain here. Literally the weekend before, I can't remember both guys' names, but the one dude got hit with a bunch of nut shots, a bunch of low blows, <laughs> to the point that it was, it was bad. They really should have stopped the fight. But Kamaru, now, now first off, some people might say, well, he didn't react right away. And it definitely, when you get hit in the cup, the balls, whatever, you don't always react right away. It takes a second or two for your body to react for whatever reason. So that's not a legit claim to why this might not be a nut shot. And some people are tougher than others, but look at this face. Look at this thing. He's just upright, casually walking away. And now if we actually go back, and if you look at this picture right here, you can clearly see he got hit on the belt line. Now, I'm not a physicist. I'm not a sports doctor. You know, I don't know all the science behind everything. As much as I love science, maybe it grazed the top of the cup. Maybe he got kicked so hard that it somehow reverberated the cup or reverberated his giblets and, you know, he felt it. And maybe it wasn't that bad, but he felt, all right, you, it was a low blow, I'm, I'm going to walk away. Now, in the UFC and in MMA in general, as a ref, either you see it or you don't. You're not supposed to call a timeout because someone says they got poked in the eye or says they got hit in the nuts. You're supposed to see it. If you don't, tell the fighters to keep going. The ref's job is to be there, be present, and watching. So if something like that happens, he sees it. But look, at the end of the day, like I said, maybe in a weird roundabout way, it was a low blow. So, all right, first little iffy part that I don't necessarily agree with, but it's still up for debate. But now, now this, this is where... If you want to call it a conspiracy theory or not, um, 
because spoiler alert, Kamar Usman ends up winning this fight. And especially when it comes to the second part, this could have totally changed the tide of the battle. So let me show you undeniable, unequivocal proof that if Usman didn't lie about the low blow, he definitely lied about the eye poke. And this is actually even crazier because if we go to the eye poke right here, look at this. Now, from both angles, it's a little bit hard to tell where exactly on the eye this is. You know, did the finger go in the eye? Did it just kind of graze the outside, you know, the orbital? But it's undeniable that the finger is... It's in the very close general vicinity. Okay, so you can't argue this. We literally have video image proof. This is where it gets crazy. Kamaru turns away, and, and Colby even gets another good shot, uh, a left hook in on the fence before Mark Goddard gets in there to call the timeout. As Kamaru's turning away, he holds his left eye for like a second. But again, we can clearly see in the video, the eye poke, uh, close eye poke, whatever you want to call it, is in the left eye. Now, Mark calls a timeout and brings in the doctor. Because of course you're going to bring in the doctor because for a potential eye poke. Colby calls bullshit because this is now the second timeout in the fight. I get it. Momentum is a real thing. Momentum is important. But look at this. This is it. Guys, this is, this is the nail in the coffin. When the doctor's checking out his eye, where he's not looking at the left eye at all. He's looking at the right eye. Kamaru even says in his post-fight interview that he was saying, you know, I want the fight to keep going, just wipe it out. And you can kind of see him saying that here. But this conversation is about the right eye. Now, I know UFC events are, are crazy. It's a fight. It's hectic. But if you get poked in the left eye, confusion, frustration, none of these things are going to convince you that you got poked in your right eye. Something's not right here. Something is not right here. Now, the worst part about this is that not only... Now, now Kamaru has two timeouts in his bank, if we're going to look at it that way. Now, when Kamaru pokes Kobe in the eye, and again, whether this is a, a, a full-on eye poke or just grazes the orbital or whatever, Mark... Goddard, one of the veterans of the game. I trust this man's judgment. However, when Colby gets poked in the eye, let's listen to what he says. Listen, listen. Colby, hold time. Hey, 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 hey. Listen, Colby, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Come here. Come here, please. Come here. Listen, I know it's chaotic. We know we're in a fight. We're going to keep it clean. You understand? Okay, no more timeouts. Let's go. Fight. <laughs> what is this? So you're telling me that for a possible low blow that you didn't see, we're just calling it off of Usman's reaction, an eye poke that he didn't see, calling it off Usman's reaction, which, again, we talked about earlier, that's not the job of a ref. The job of the ref is to see the foul when it happens. If a fighter says it happened, but you as a ref didn't see it, like that, I'm, unfortunately, that's the name of the game here. Mark calls a sh very short timeout and says... No more timeouts. You're really not going to give Colby five minutes after you've given Kamaru a potential 10? Now, of course, Kamaru didn't take the 10 minutes, you know, the cumulative five, five for the nutshot and five for the eye poke. But you're not even going to give Colby a, a chance to take his official timeout. This, this is like half a timeout to say that there's not going to be any more timeouts after this. And this is why I'm a big advocate for... Hello, craziest thing in the world, instant replay. Guys, I, I kind of get, like, in soccer, they don't do instant replay because it ruins the flow of the, of the game. But if we've already called a timeout, we've already killed the momentum, we've already destroyed any flow to the match that there was in that moment, why can we not enact a instant replay at this point? Because the refs, unfortunately, are human beings. Uh, again, Mark Goddard is a veteran ref of the sport, and I'm not sure what happened this night, but he made a couple of mistakes, and this isn't even talking about what might be considered an early stoppage. People are saying it's an early stoppage because a lot of the punches on the ground were hitting his gloves or just missing, and I do agree with that, and 
Hale Sonnen even said that he's never seen a fight stopped in that position. Now, Kobe had gotten knocked down once before that, but he popped right back up, and then he got, you know, dropped the second time. And I, I think there is a an argument on both sides of the equation for the stoppage. But I think th the worst part about the stoppage is that Kobe got fucked over three times before the stoppage that may or may not have been early. But if the rest of the fight had been fair, I don't think that stoppage would have been as contentious. And to be honest, from what I have have watched of the UFC, and I've, I've watched quite a bit, but I, I believe that if someone like Keith Peterson was in there, I don't think those two timeouts would have been called for Usman. And I think if, if someone like Herb Dean was in there, the stoppage wouldn't have came so quickly. Kamaro seems like a good guy. And, you know, he talks about he, he's fighting for the world. This one is not just for me. This one is for the whole entire world right now. He's fighting for the people of Brazil. He's fighting against the negativity that Kobe puts out. And I'm not sure if he thought this win was so important that he had to do whatever he had to do, including lie or cheat, if you want to call it that, to get the win. But I went back and watched all of Kamaru's UFC fights, and there's only one time that he's ever done something similar where he calls a low blow and it was definitely a kick to the thigh. It was not a low blow. And that was actually with Keith Peterson in there. So, but I mean, for the most part, you know, it always seems like Kamaru just does his work. He just puts on the pressure. He works hard and he's an amazing fighter. But I was really disappointed when I went back and watched this fight the second time because I'll be totally honest, the, the, as I was watching it that night and just wanting Colby to lose and I had been drinking, I didn't notice these things. And I think a lot of people probably didn't notice these things in the moment. But I went back and watched the fight, and it made me sad because if Colby's going to lose, I want him to lose in a fair fight. So, you know, to be honest, I really can't stand behind Kamaru Usman at this point. I don't know who he's versing next. Maybe it'll be Jorge Masvidal. It'd be awesome for Colby to get a rematch, you know, a rubber match, like, right away. But his fucking jaw's broken. And he, he was in there for two and a half rounds with a broken jaw, and he even tweeted, you know, I'm in there to kill or be killed, and Mark Goddard took that away from him. Now, obviously, the safety of the fighters is the number one concern of Mark Goddard, but I really do think that the possibly fake low blow and the definitely fake eye poke, you know, are a big thing that we should talk about, and no one... In, in all of the, the post-fight videos I've seen on YouTube, by anybody, Chael Sonnen, Ariel Hawani... Uh, no one is talking about this fake eye poke. And literally, the evidence is right there. So, you know, I'm going to call upon Ariel Hawani, who is, in my opinion, the not just the best MMA reporter, but just one of the most amazing reporters in general. The nut shot's up for debate, but that eye poke, there's something wrong there. Ariel, tell me what's going on. Please bring this to the attention of the people because... No one's probably gonna find my video. So please, Ariel, please talk about this. I, I put a decent amount of work into this video. I hope everyone enjoys it. Ariel, if you actually do end up uh, listening or watching, uh, I, you know, this is my first video of this kind ever, and you're a big inspiration to me. And I just, this is a story that no one's talking about, and I would really like to be heard. So Ariel, yes, if you're if you're listening, or Chael Sonnen, someone, someone talk about this, please. Oh my God. Oh, all right. I'm a little a little heated because I just, I love this sport and I want it to be the best sport it can be. And I really really do think that because again, it, don't take any of this as shit talk on Mark Goddard. He's a human being. I really think we need instant replays in what is arguably one of if not the most chaotic sport currently in existence. So again, thank you for listening. Share your thoughts in the comments down below. I will keep working hard to make something out of this series. Thank you for listening slash watching the Untitled Fightcast, and I will see you in the next video.